Oh my god, she's big. It's so good. Hello friends and welcome back. My name is Lena and this is where I talk about books and life and art but mostly books. And this is my top 10 books from 2023. Everyone is posting their favorites and I was like, you know what, why have I never made a video documenting my favorites? Why have I never even made a list of my favorite books that I read in a year? So I was like, you know what, I should look at what I've read and do that. And I did and then I was like, I gotta share this list. These books are great. <laughs> So a uh, quick disclaimer, if I love a book that you hated, it is not personal attack on your taste in reading. I truly believe that there are different books for different people and that's why we have genres and so many writers and such a, a busy publishing industry. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and I mean, I tried to rank these um, from like starting at number 10 and going to number one, but really they're all in the top 10 and they're all fantastic. <laughs> um, so I'm going to start with my honorable mentions because in 2023 I read 150 books. So it is hard to narrow it down to a top 10. And these are books that I've seen on other people's lists of favorites. So I'm keeping them as honorable mentions just so I could make room on my list for books that maybe I haven't seen mentioned as much and that I feel like need equal amounts of love. Um, but my honorable mentions are uh, number one, Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguro. Uh, this was, I think my first book of the year and I still think about it. So I read it a year ago now and uh, my God, is this a heartbreaker? It had me crying multiple times throughout and I'm not really one that cries very often when I read. Um, I mean, I have lots of feelings, but <laughs> to actually get to the point of tears, something has to be pretty profound. This was amazing. It took me on such a journey and I cared so much about these characters. And so if you have not had a chance to experience this yet and you're okay with um, a little bit of heartache, then highly recommend. My next one, uh, Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. So this is a translated Japanese work. You've probably seen lots of people mention this. I think there are four books in this series now. I read the first book this year. It was on my 23 and 23, and I am so glad that I finally picked it up. It was one of those books that I was saving for a really long time because I wanted to read it at the right time and it in fact was the right time when I read it because I loved it so 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 much. Um, one thing that I did notice this year with my reading was that I really love translated fiction and especially Japanese translated work. So um, I definitely want to dive deeper into that this coming year. But this is a story about a magical cafe. There is one seat in this cafe that when you sit at it you can travel back in time to see someone. There's all these little rules with it and lots of little restrictions and things that make it really complicated. There's only one seat in the cafe and you only have until the coffee gets cold. Oh my god, I'm just like thinking about like one of the connections in this story now and it's like, it's really, really beautiful. So I'll give this one a go. And then my last honorable mention is If We Were Villains. This is a dark academia um, and it follows these seven students at a conservatory and they're all studying uh, like traditional Shakespeare theater. And it's like kind of funny because the characters will just be like talking to each other in like full Shakespearean verse. And uh, so if you're not a big fan of Shakespeare, this might not be for you. But if you do enjoy Shakespeare, I recommend. Um, so it was kind of fun because I was reading this at the same time that I was um, reading Macbeth and so uh, like it just synced up really nicely. I feel like this could be a really good fall read so keep this on your list if you haven't read it yet. And now to my actual top 10. We're here. So exciting. I need a quick coffee break. I thought I was going to tip my chair. That was really scary. Okay, just a little bit more. Um, okay, so my top 10. First, this is one that I mentioned during my mid-year freakout tag, The Light Pirate. I guess I've mentioned it probably in several videos. I still don't understand why I don't see people talking about this book. This is so good. So this is a kind of 
like a speculative science fiction slash contemporary piece and it has to do with climate change and how that um, affects us as humans and how we are living and surviving in this world uh, and I just thought that it was so clever and insightful the way that it like mapped out this whole story following this family while the world is becoming uninhabitable and just the way that like oh the government would put these laws in place and things it, it just seemed like oh this is how it's gonna happen like felt like oh this is the future okay and so i just thought that it was really incredible and i think it's something that everyone should read because the climate crisis is real and it's scary and this really put it in perspective but was still able to end with like a feeling of hope and I just thought that that was so beautiful so I really really recommend The Light Pirate by Lily Brooks Dalton okay the next one is a novella but I read this I believe during Summerween but The Salt Grows Heavy by Cassandra Caw um so this is like kind of a retelling of The Little Mermaid it said but it is a very very dark take on it so it follows this mermaid and a plague doctor on this journey but the writing in this is so incredible i don't know how she manages to make such gory horrific scenes so beautiful so um it just the the prose in this is just in incredible it just like sucks you right in it could be like a little bit intimidating because it's so poetically written almost but because it's short it's like it just like pulls you in and immerses you and then you move through the story so quickly like it i really loved this one i'm still surprised at how much i loved it and i'm already like excited to reread it again so okay so number eight is Whale Fall by Daniel Krauss. I think this was another Summerween read. Man, I had a really good Summerween because I know there's another Summerween one in this <laughs> list too. So, man, that was a good reading week. <laughs> Whale Fall. Uh, this is about a man whose father has passed away and part of his dealing with his grief process of losing his father is he goes into the ocean to find his father's remains. Um, and he, you know, would go scuba diving with his father growing up and things like that. So he knows how to scuba dive and everything and so he goes into the ocean and while he is down there searching for his father's remains he is swallowed by a whale which is a terrifying premise <laughs> and so every chapter is marked by how much oxygen he has left i really enjoy grief horror and so this was just really really beautiful the way that it explored um his relationship with his father while he's inside of this whale <laughs> um and oh my god like, i just like i can't believe this story like, this is incredible and so if you feel like you can handle it if you're claustrophobic or like afraid of like underwater horror this might be a little much for you also if you've had a recent loss in your family of someone close to you it might it might not be the right time or it might be a really beautiful part of your grief process so really do some internal work there and figure out like, where you're at with that but oh my god and number seven is lessons in chemistry 630 is one of my favorite literary characters of all time now i also love elizabeth zott i loved everyone in this story i like still have like such vivid images in my brain of like when she's like brewing the coffee in her chemistry scientific way in her kitchen and stuff like oh i just loved how she like really stood for what she believed in it was fantastic i thought about it for so long afterwards and i like gave it to my mom right away to read because i was like this is so good you have to read this i loved it um i don't love the cover in the u.s i wish i had the uk cover so maybe one day so number six this was another one of my summerween books but rouge by mona awad this one is so strange so if you're not a person who likes things that are a little bit like mind bendy and like what's real and what's not this might not be for you but it is beauty horror and oh my god it was so good so our main character her mother has recently died so much grief on my list i can't help it i am an enneagram four and i just love to be in the deep feels whenever i can be so but her mother has died and so she goes home to take care of things and she becomes acquainted with this 
spa group that her mom was associated with and she starts to just really lose touch with reality completely and it really like time just kind of like disappears for her because of these transformative spa experiences that she's having but it definitely has like major like cult vibes and like like mind control kind of stuff almost yeah it's it's really creepy but i really really liked it like really i was just i was just in it with Belle and just was there for everything that came up so if you haven't read this one yet rouge by mona awad Number five, is this my only sci-fi? To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. She's big and I believe she's part of a series but I've only read this first one but I, I think a lot of people say it's a little on the long side which I will say, yeah, it's pretty long. It, t it took me a minute, yeah. 875 pages so it's pretty long but my god was it good. So this uh, team of space, explorers i don't know what their job title is i can't i can't remember what they're called now it's just making me think of of buzz lightyear explorers in space and she is exposed to this foreign parasite and it latches on and basically takes over her body but she is still her so um i don't want to spoil anything so i'm like how do i talk about this but anyway, she takes on this like alien parasite and that changes her whole world and she has to be like rescued by another ship. They're exploring research on it and things like that to figure out like how to free her or how to like break this link. It's like 900 pages so like obviously there, there's a lot. It's hard to sum it up in like a couple sentences. But if you like being in space, if you think aliens and parasites and things like that are like an interesting uh, concept and stories, this one is really good and if you just want like a science fiction world that you can just be in for the long haul then this is the one because she takes a while to get through and it's worth every minute i did not feel like it was long-winded just because i am a really big fan of science fiction and so this was like a world that i just was fine going back to again and again i wasn't like frustrated waiting for the story to be done so it worked for me i loved it i feel like i just got shorter actually i need another coffee break Number four, I have another um, Japanese translated work here, Sweet Bean Paste. Oh, it's so good. It's so sweet. I just like seeing how relationships, being like misfits in society, how these very different people connect and how they just experience so much heart healing through one another. It is just so sweet. It's just so beautiful. Oh my goodness, I really, really loved this one and I read it while my brother was in Japan so it felt just like really special that time while he was away and I was in this book. It like made me feel closer to him and so, um, ah, oh, now I want to reread it like right away. Number three, we're in the top three, Cleopatra and Frankenstein. What a messy, messy character driven story. So the characters in this are written so well. Coco Malorza does an incredible job creating really deep characters that you feel like you know so well in such a short amount of time because each chapter is told from a pers perspective of a different character and by the end of that chapter you are like really invested in them and really really care about them. But this has some really heavy themes of uh, abuse, addiction, suicide, lots of difficult heavy matter but also manages to move through all of that and create a hopeful outlook at the end and it's just it's really amazing the character work in this is just really really what made this story just stand out to me so much top two louise erdrich the sentence oh my god so good so this follows a native american woman i believe she works in the bookstore but the bookstore is haunted and it is haunted by a woman who frequented the bookstore always had a problematic fixation on native american culture 
this character whose ghost is like coming to the bookshop really annoyed our main character when they were alive and the sentence what a clever title because it refers to so many different things in the story but it's just like it's such an incredible mystery as it unfolds and she's kind of trying to figure out these different things and she herself has kind of like a dark past and my god it was so good so if you have not read this i also read um the night watchman by louise erdrich this year and loved that as well but this one was the one that really took me and was like louise erdrich is now one of your favorite authors here you go so yep so good and then my number one read of the year, which was so un unexpected. I did not think that this would be my favorite book of the year, but it was Shark Heart by Emily Hobbeck. Where to even begin? So it's definitely a speculative fiction piece. This man finds out that he is turning into a great white shark. And in this world, there are other people who have had this disease where they turn into an animal and it follows him through that whole process. It really is heartbreaking. But it really is a love story. Oh God, it's so hard to talk about books without spoilers. I don't want to spoil anything because I went into this really knowing nothing other than he was turning into a great white shark <laughs> and and it was fabulous the way that it unfolded and my friend Jess read it at the same time and we finished it at the same time and we were like oh my god new favorite book maybe of all time like so incredible so if you enjoy speculative fiction if you like like a science fiction kind of twist on things this is a beautiful beautiful story I just I can't recommend it enough so good so beautiful so there you have it, my top 10 books from 2023 and my honorable mentions for the year. I'm sure that there are tons of other books that I loved and would have easily made it into my top 10, but they may have been library books and I didn't have them on my physical shelf. I can think of a few off the top of my head right now that I wish were on this list. Yeah, let me know what your top 10 were or if you have a favorite book from this year, how many books you read. I would love to hear about your journey of 2023 as well. And um, yeah, I hope that you had a fantastic reading year last year and that you have started a, another wonderful reading year in 2024. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!